All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Super Pewter Ball Python. The Super Pewter consists of the Super Cinnamon and the Super Pastel. It's a pretty interesting combination. Most of your Super Pewters actually have some degree of paradoxing. And when you think about paradoxing, you usually think of little tiny black spots, usually just kind of random on the snake. And most paradoxing is not genetic, meaning if you actually have a snake with some paradoxing and you bring it to something else, you really can't reproduce it. But in the case of the Super Pewter, I'd say it's probably the closest you could actually get to some form of genetic paradoxing where most of the superputers actually have black spots. Sometimes they're just really faint little spots and sometimes it's really just completely covered with spots. It's pretty amazing. And the superputer is also extremely visually dominant, meaning if you actually work other genes into the superputer, a lot of times it'll completely mask all the other genes. So I want to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the potential of the Super Pewter Ball Python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and the first thing I wanna show you is how to make a pewter. The pewter is the combination of the pastel and the cinnamon. And I'd say out of all the combinations in ball pythons, the pewters can be probably one of the most variable from one to the other. And I think it really comes down to the variation in the individual genes. Both the pastel and the cinnamon can be really variable. And this is what one version of a pastel looks like. This is, this is kind of an unusual pastel. It has a really dark background. Usually pastels aren't this black in the background and it's really super bright I'd say this is probably one of the best pastels that I've actually seen some of them can be really super bright and some of them can be pretty faded out as a matter of fact I've actually produced really bright ones in my collection and I've produced some pastels that are almost like a rusty orange color kind of interesting how the the pastels can really vary from one to the other and here is what a cinnamon looks like one version of the cinnamon and if you actually lined up a whole bunch of cinnamons you you see they really vary from one to the other. Some of them look almost like a dark normal, which is kind of interesting. And some of them, like this one, has a little bit of kind of a reddish color to it. And some of them have like a really deep coppery reddish color in a lot of your cinnamons. And the cinnamon is, if you actually look at a lot of your cinnamon combinations, a lot of times it'll actually streak out the sides of the pattern on your cinnamon combinations. That's kind of one of the key indicators that you actually have cinnamon in the mix and cinnamon is also really similar to black pastel as a matter of fact a lot of people think that they're pretty much the same thing I, I think there's some differences between the cinnamon and the black pastel I think usually the black pastel is a little bit darker especially in combos and a lot of times the black pastel can have a lot more of the kind of a like a almost like a copper color compared to a lot of your cinnamons so if you actually take a cinnamon and you breed it to a pastel this is what you get you get a pewter and and this is one version of the pewter. And I actually did a video on the pewter and I showed like eight different pewters. They're so variable. And this is kind of, I'd say, pretty much your average pewter. Some of them can look almost like a metallic silver color. And some of them can look like a coppery, almost like a reddish brown color. It's pretty amazing from one pewter to the other. So if you actually took the, the pewter, which contains the cinnamon and the pastel, and bred it to another pewter, you would actually get the super pewter and take a look at this. You know, the, the odds of getting the super pewter by breeding two pewters together, I think is like one in 16 or something like that. So it's not really good odds actually starting with two pewters and breeding them together. Probably your best thing would to take like a super pewter and breed it to a pewter. Or if you actually took two super pewters and bred them together, you get a whole clutch of super pewters, which would be pretty cool. And this is, this is kind of interesting. This is one version of the super pewter. Sometimes you can actually see almost what version version of cinnamon is in your super pewter based on the color. So some of the super pewters can be almost like a like a silvery color and you can definitely tell it's it's kind of the the silvery version of the cinnamon versus if you have kind of like the reddish tone sometimes you can see you know the reddish tone of the cinnamon you breed two of them together and you get kind of the reddish version of the super pewter. If you actually look really close on this it's kind of interesting it has a little black spot right on the head a little 
little paradox right on the head. You see them just kind of little random spots here and there all over the snake that you really can't reproduce. It's pretty much totally unexpected. I actually pulled up another version of the Super Pewter. Take a look at this one. This is the exact same jeans. It's the Super Cinnamon and the Super Pastel. And look at how many spots and colors are on this. It's like one big paradox. Pretty amazing how it can really vary from one Super Pewter to another. It's, it's kind of interesting. Some some of them have dark heads and some of them have light heads. Some of them look kind of a, like a like a almost like a silver color and some of them like this almost look kind of like it almost looks like it's all pixelated over the whole snake. Completely different look than the other Super Peter. I actually pulled up one more over here and this will kind of blow you away. This is another version of the Super Peter and it's pretty amazing. You line up all these snakes and you wouldn't actually realize at first glance that they're all the same genes, just different versions of the genes. And you can definitely tell in this one you're actually using kind of the coppery colored version of the cinnamon to make this version of the Super the Super Super Pewter. As a matter of fact, this is actually called the Super Pewter Bullet, and the bullet is kind of a spinoff of the name from the Silver Bullet. So the Silver Bullet is actually the Super Cinnamon with just one copy of the Pastel. So if you actually have two copies of the Pastel, you can call it Super Pewter or Super Pewter Bullet. It's actually the first time I've actually seen that name. But even in this one, you can actually see there's little tiny paradoxes all over this thing, just like little ink spots all over. Uh, and some of them you don't see very many of them and some of them I'd say most of them you see them to some degree this this little bit of paradoxing through the whole snake. And keep in mind if you actually take a super pewter and you breed it to something else, all the offspring come out as pewters with one copy of the cinnamon and one copy of the pastel, which is pretty amazing. So the super pewter is really visually dominant and to test the visual dominance against other genes we can actually use the banana. The banana is really super visually dominant. It's up there with the albino which is like the king of dominance as far as you know kind of dominating the visual appearance when mixing it with other genes. And the banana is kind of interesting. It's actually a co-dominant gene. You breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as banana and usually when you mix banana in with other combinations what you actually get is uh, it's kind of interesting when we talk about visual dominance sometimes you get a visual dominance as far as the colors and sometimes you get a, a dominance as far as the pattern and when it comes to the banana I'd say it's definitely a color visual dominance you mix anything with a banana and usually you get kind of a, like this yellowish orange color coming through in a lot of your combinations so here's what happens if you take the banana and you work it into the super pewter take a look at this this is pretty amazing the super Pewter even dominates the banana which is pretty amazing because usually the banana actually breaks through almost everything and kind of the weird thing about this is if you actually take a look at the kind of the, the 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 information over here this is actually an older female super pewter banana weighs 2835 grams so this is a full-size adult female and usually with your bananas as they age and mature they actually get little freckles all over over the bananas and I was actually looking at this I was trying to figure out if these little freckles were from the banana or from the super pewter and I'm pretty sure these are actually these look like banana spots kind of equally distributed through the whole snake I think the banana is is kind of being masked as far as the color but you can actually see the spots from the banana actually breaking through in this combination and you can definitely see on the head for some reason when you mix banana in with a lot of combinations it actually gives you kind of a cute head in a lot of your banana combinations. So here's another one that's really visually dominant and that's the pied. And the pied can be really variable. Sometimes you can have a really high white pied. You can actually see on this one it has a lot of white and just a little bit of color. And sometimes it'll be a really low white pied. And sometimes you can work other genes in with pied to influence the amount of white. Sometimes you can actually work, like for example, you can actually work Russo into the pied and almost always get a really high white pied. Or you can work Enchi in with the pied. The Enchi pieds are 
are always really low white. It's kind of interesting. So if you actually take Pied and work it into the supercomputer, this is what you get. You end up with an all white snake. This is, it's kind of interesting. The, the, kind of what's going on in this situation is you actually have the super cinnamon interacting with the Pied. And the super cinnamon is one of those genes that when you work it into Pied, it almost always forces a completely white snake. So the, if you actually have a completely white pie, there's pretty much nothing that will break through uh, an all white pie. I haven't seen any genes even come close to even faintly breaking through an all white pie. It's pretty amazing. And this one is it's kind of interesting if you actually look at the genes on this one. So this is, they think it's a silver bullet, which is the super cinnamon and one copy of the pastel, or it's a super pewter, the super cinnamon, super pastel, or it could have a sandblast in there too. So there's, there's a whole bunch of different genes that could be in the mix and usually when you make an all white pie between like the pied and the super cinnamon you can have a whole bunch of other genes in there and you really can't tell unless you actually breed it to something else and prove out those genes. It completely masks all the other genes. So here is the king of visual dominance when we're talking about visual dominance. This is the albino. It's kind of interesting when we work albino into the supercomputer. Usually when you work other genes into the albino, the albino is so visually dominant as far as the color. A lot of times you'll end up with kind of a jumbled up pattern, but you'll always end up with a yellow and a white snake. Almost nothing can break through the, the yellow and the white of the albino. And you pretty much always know that you have albino in the mix because of the bright bright red eyes, has really bright red, super bright red eyes with the, the albino. There's actually different versions of the albino. This is just the straight albino, but there's also, for example, there's the lavender albino or the caramel albino. But I say as far as the albino, it's, it's one of my favorites. It usually stays a really stark white as far as the background and a really bright yellow. So here's what happens if you take albino and you work it into the super pewter. Take a look at this. This is kind of an interesting combination. I was actually coming over here and I was looking at all the all the, the the combinations of the super cinnamons and the albinos, and it's, it's weird when you work super cinnamon into albino, you get an all white snake. Similar if you work super cinnamon into the pied, which is kind of interesting. As a matter of fact, a lot of people actually would call this kind of one of the versions of the cherry bomb, which is the all white snake with the red eyes. Although technically, the official version of the cherry bomb would actually be the super Mojave. Uh, the Super Mojave Albino, that is the, the official version of the Cherry Bomb. But it's kind of interesting if you actually look at this. It's an all-white snake, but you can actually see still a little bit of paradoxing breaking through the Albino. And I think a lot of that paradoxing is coming from the Super Cinnamon. As a matter of fact, this one's actually listed as an Albino Super Cinnamon. So this one doesn't have the Super Pastel in it. But I would imagine if you actually worked Super Pastel into the snake that you probably wouldn't get any difference in the appearance. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Thedu Belodo asks, What's the best combination of genes to make a blue-eyed leucistic? And that is a very good question. So essentially what a blue-eyed leucistic is, it's an all-white snake with blue eyes, and it contains two genes in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. And there's about 40 different ways to actually make a blue-eyed leucistic complex. I actually did a video on it, and I couldn't believe how many different ways you can actually make one. But if you actually use certain genes, sometimes you'll have a blue-eyed leucistic where some color and pattern kind of breaks through the white snake a little bit. And probably if if you're, if you're actually looking for like the brightest white, the best blue-eyed leucistic, probably hands down the combination of genes to use is the Lesser and the Mojave. A lot of people consider the Lesser Mojave to be pretty much the ultimate blue-eyed leucistic. And a lot of blue-eyed leucistics will actually have bigger eyes or smaller eyes depending on the genes in the combination. Sometimes you can actually make snakes with bug eyes. Sometimes the super lessers can have larger than normal eyes. And sometimes they can have micro eyes with a certain combination of genes. And if you actually take the Lesser and the Mojave, a lot of people say that usually you'll end up with the perfect eye size and the brightest white snake out of all the blue-eyed leucistics. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.